can China's government save their stock market? They're at least attempting to. You might have seen the recent story that uh, China reduced its trading tax um, by 50 percent. Um, this came out just recently as uh, uh, Chinese stocks are, are down pretty significantly from their highs. And and though they're only down 3%, uh, here we're looking at the Chinese large cap index, um, they're only down 3% on the year. It might not feel like a lot, but you compare that to an S&P 500, a U.S. stock market that is up double digit percentage points, and that's rough. And, and then also highlight the fact that this market is down on the year when most major uh, stock markets are up, and it's off almost 20% from its peak, that that's a pretty significant slide as Chinese economic data has been really rough uh, the last quarter, essentially the last few months here. And the, the Chinese government is, is starting to try to put anything behind boosting its market and you may see you see the there the the rightmost entry in the chart it's a little bounce back that we're seeing in the chinese large cap stock index but is this lasting uh, uh, uh reducing a tax you have on investing in the market Yes, you could make the theoretical case that it incentivizes uh, people to maybe invest more in the market, or even you could make the case, well, if I have $100 and the tax was 1%, um, instead of having $99 to invest, now I have $99.5. And, and of course, you magnify that a uh, hundredfold, a thousandfold for large investors. That could be meaningful, m meaningfully more money that's on the buy side of this market but it doesn't really change too much structurally right like, like that that to me we'll we'll dissect it in, in just a little bit uh first of all let's look at the price action because i mean this is a, a pretty large divergence a pretty gap to make up um by china here and uh, we'll see if this recent uh, change is enough to save this struggling market. I mean, down 18% versus U.S. stocks is really tough to look at. And and also, you look at an S&P 500 here uh, and NASDAQ up even more on the year. Uh, the divergence is one thing, but also just the stark dichotomy that we're seeing whereby one market is bouncing back from a rough 2022 um, and, and has really put together a few good years since the pandemic and has put together a great handful of years, even including the slide of the pandemic. And the Chinese market, not even in positive territory for the year. It's, it's not a matter of, you know, stocks globally are moving higher and just Apple and Microsoft and, and Amazon are, are, are just really tough to compete with. It is a binary situation whereby Chinese stocks are in a bearish mode this year and the last couple of years. We'll get to even more data in just a second. And, and U.S. stocks are not only outperforming, uh, but they're seeing optimism, bullishness, uh, almost completely different sentiments, um, let alone the, yeah, almost 20% of underperformance and the year ain't over yet. Um, so, so what's going on? What's causing this divergence? Uh, why is Chinese, uh, why are Chinese government officials trying to step in to do anything? Well, they're in a little bit of a downward spiral and a negative feedback loop, um, whereby you're seeing lacking domestic demand uh, create bad economic data, create negative consumer sentiment, create lower prices for goods, deflation, unemployment, and then that feeds back into a lack of domestic demand once again. Um, and this can happen. Uh, it, it happens you know, in most major economies every once in a while. Uh, is it a death sentence for the Chinese economy? Of course not. Um, 
a lot of times bad economic data can feed on itself and create a little bit of a snowball effect. And usually when that occurs, at least in the U.S., the version of this that we see um, is when we see the government step in or, or the you know Federal Reserve step in uh, and, and make some big sweeping changes to incentivize either demand uh, from consumers or producer innovation uh, as well, you know, with uh, different um, tax cut uh, measurements for corporations or reduced interest rates from the Fed. Uh, but what we've seen recently out of China, which is kind of a short term incentive for consumers to buy stocks, doesn't necessarily create uh innovation at the corporate level or the producer level um, and it doesn't necessarily create consumer optimism as well it could actually have a potential you know medium to long-term effect of greater consumer pessimism when you reflect on the fact that oh they're just trying to cut the taxes that i pay to buy the stocks they must really be scraping the bottom of the barrel here um, now there are some potential actions that can be committed um, uh, that we see here that i've already kind of alluded to um, on the domestic side you could see you know some stimulus uh, which is probably the most um, likely outcome given china's part of the reason that they're in the situation that they're witnessing currently with a, a down stock market when so many other global stock markets are are bullish right now or have been this year is um the international trouble the chinese government has been really strict on um consultancy and 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 innovation coming from other territories and and that's really created a, a lack of demand from you know the us and europe and other major economies to either work with large chinese companies or or invest in the chinese economy so maybe that international promotion not quite there, but what they could also do is not necessarily work with other global powers. They can continue to be tough there, uh, but they could further incentivize exports. And, uh, you know, the Chinese currency has been falling, um, which could boost some exports as well, which might boost that trade number. You'll remember that the balance of trade number that came out of China, which essentially compares exports and imports, historically very positive for China in the export column, came in worse than expected. And that set off uh, some alarms for the Chinese stock market. So could boost that side of things. But what they're doing now really feels like a short term type of action. Uh, like I say, reducing this uh, tax on uh, investment, um, it, it, it doesn't even have really a cause and effect outside of that. I, I kind of made the, the biggest case for it would maybe be, you know, I'm a huge investment fund. I'm like a Vanguard or, or what have you, who's going to be pumping, you know, billions of dollars into these investments, uh, uh, given uh, passive investors that I have. And instead of, like I say, investing 99% of it, now I can buy 99.5%, uh, given that this tax has been cut in half. Of course, these are all example numbers that I'm pulling out of thin air, but, but that's really as far as it goes. And you know, a month or two months down the line, has anything changed it's hard to make a case that there's any real lasting long-term effect. And, and this is, you know, a, a situation that really requires some lasting long-term effects. When you broaden the scope a little bit and just look over the price action since 2020, um, yes, it's underperformance this year of 17%. And, you know, U.S. stocks being a positive territory, Chinese stocks being a negative territory, go back the last three and a half years, um, and, and it's even crazier here, whereby you have an S&P that is up 
uh, almost 40% in this time frame and a an FXI Chinese large cap stock ETF that's down almost 40%. So almost 80% worth of divergence. Again, a stock market that is in a bullish mode compared to one that is on the other side of the binary spectrum here um, in terms of sentiment and and um, you know one that can compete uh, here with the U.S. stock market, and you can see during the um, COVID collapse and then uh, ensuing bounce back in the middle part of 2020, uh, Chinese stocks were moving pretty close to one for one with U.S. stocks to the downside, and then to the upside. And then you have uh, 2021, things start to fall apart. And then 2022, both markets see downside. Again, U.S. stocks able to battle back, able to see some you know, uh, zig and zag from 2022 to today uh, in 2023, bouncing back really nicely. And for Chinese large cap stocks, it's been you know, bad news is bad and good news is short-lived. And so these short-term fixes not likely to help when you're seeing divergences this stark. Um, a couple of different things on the board for Chinese uh, government officials to look at, um, but it's likely going to be a, a large uh, change that butts up against some of their politics and, and what they've been comfortable with. So we'll see if China can uh, save its stock market. It's uh, in a pretty rough shape right now.